humanity has always been trying to dominate nature. And as we see the results of global warming, it is not always good. Interestingly, in the course of centuries, people have been suffering from cold and heat, floods and droughts. Humanity has been resisting all this as much as we could, trying to transform nature for our own comfort. People have been dreaming about paradise on Earth since ancient times. This tradition was set by Persians, who were dreaming about heavenly gardens in the middle of the deserted lands. But seeking for paradise, people hardly thought they would turn the Earth into hell. As technologies developed, people's desire to subject nature has become even more real. We can recall the Suez Canal, or huge dams on rivers. But there have been even more crazy projects the implementation of would have caused very negative consequences for the Earth. Today we will talk about how man wanted to become equal with God, planning a fantastic reconstruction of the planet with the help of the most risky and crazy projects. This is Smart Stories Channel. We tell stories that make you think. Until the 19th century, people were cautious about changing nature. Yes, they built channels, created irrigation systems, but nobody had the goal of changing nature. Their goals were quite modest. Grow as much wheat as possible to bake as much bread as possible. But soon, it all changed. The development of science and industry, as well as very popular fantasy novels, expanded the horizons. A new idea, quite simple but attractive, emerged. Man is the king of nature, and if he's the king, then he can do with it whatever he wants. Let's now move to the beginning of 1928. It's been 10 years since the First World War was over. This was a devastating war that left European economics in ruins. But these were perfect conditions for the development of radical politics, both left and right, as well as radical engineering ideas. German engineer and architect Hermann Zogel was one of those radicals. He firmly believed that the base of the future world should be a dam. A gigantic hydroelectric power plant on the Strait of Gibraltar, which separates Europe from Africa. He was sure that as soon as such a power plant was launched, almost all Europe would get an endless source of electricity. But Zogel was interested not only in energy. As he was German, a resident of the country that had just lost the war, he didn't want the World War to repeat, so his plan was as follows. This huge dam that would give Europe the power it needed could offer the much-needed balance between the countries. If someone started a new aggressive war, his power would just be shut down, a switch as a means of force. Thus, the world would not just get a source of energy, but also chances for a peaceful future. The project was named Atlantropa. According to Zorgel's documents, the base of the dam only was to be 2.5 kilometers and the height 300 meters. The construction of such a dam would have taken 10 years and 250,000 people working in four shifts. Seems like a complex project, but quite useful for the world. So what's the catch? The catch is that, because of this dam, the Mediterranean Sea would have dried out for 200 meters. This is just unbelievable. Almost all seaside cities would have found themselves deep inside the continent. The Adriatic Sea would have disappeared. Sicily and Malta would have become one island. According to his calculations, around 600,000 square kilometers of land would have been reclaimed from water. If a new country was created on those lands, it would have been larger than France or Spain. Imagine arriving at the Côte d'Azur in France, and instead of beautiful beaches and blue sea, you find a desert. A salty desert, spanning for dozens of kilometers. The giant drought was a part of the Atlantropa plan. But its author was not a perverted conqueror of nature, as many of his contemporaries he firmly believed in quite a trendy German concept of the time, Lebensraum, leaving space which is necessary for peoples for a complete development. According to this model, the lack of geographical space results in wars between countries. To avoid this, a country needs to expand its territories in a timely manner. This concept was later fully taken by the Nazis, who used it 
to justify the Second World War they started. But unlike the Nazis, Zorgel offered a more herbivorous solution. If everyone needs land, we'll just get it out of water. The problem is that the fantasy fan architect did not take into account the quality of that land. Nothing would grow there. When the Romans captured Carthage, they completely destroyed the city and covered land with salt so that nothing grew there. The thing is, the high concentration of salt poisons land. And these new lands have been under salty seawater for a very long time. So the new lands would have no chance to become a new paradise on Earth without a lot of contribution. But that's not all. Atlantropa suggested reconstructing Africa. Besides Gibraltar, Zogo wanted to build dams on the Congo River to create an African inner sea and enlarging the Chad Lake. This was supposed to improve the too warm African climate and make it more comfortable for white people. We should mention that Zogo, besides the peace and prosperity ideas, had quite racist ones. For him, Africa was the continuation of Europe without any right of independence. It was like a huge pie for him which should be shared between the white people. And the pie was too dry and his dam project would have allowed Europeans to enjoy African colonies in the right climate. But the German authorities were not eager to allocate money on such crazy projects of drying the Mediterranean Sea and cooling Africa. In 1933, Zorgel turned to the Nazis, trying to sell them the idea of the Atlantropa. Zorgel had high hopes with Hitler, but the Nazis found his project too boring. Surprisingly, the project was brought up again after World War II. The good old idea of colonies hadn't vanished. The great European countries didn't want to let their teenagers go. That's why the idea of reformatting Africa, making it cooler, seemed quite attractive. But new technologies put an end to the Project Atlantropa. In the beginning of the 1950s, nuclear reactors were invented. This was an ecologically clean and endless source of power. As a result, the huge dam already made no sense. And the idea of leaving space for Europeans vanishes for some other reason. Colonies of leading countries gain independence one by one, and many of the African countries had their own opinion about their further development. Zorgel eventually dies in quite mysterious conditions. In 1952, he was hit by a car while walking. The killer was never found. His great project died with him, never becoming a part of our reality, luckily. Though the huge dam has become a part of the fantasy genre, Many books, TV shows and games often refer to the Gibraltar Dam. But at the same time as Atlantropa died, a new project on subjecting nature emerged in another Eastern European country, the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union is probably the best example of a country, the main goal of which was the creation of a paradise on Earth. Very often, Lenin's interpretation of communism is compared to the beliefs of early Christians, who took stories about the God's kingdom on Earth literally. Not surprisingly, such an ideology had the transformation of nature as one of its goals. They even had a song, We will build our new world. At least, they tried. During its existence, the USSR always had plans on transforming the terrain for the country's needs. But let's talk about the most interesting projects. After World War II, the USSR faced the last mass famine in modern history. Ruined economy and the lack of workers were added by a long-lasting drought. Witnesses said the situation was a disaster. Most of all suffered the people in villages. Only those who had any kind of cattle and some storage of vegetables from the previous years survived. But the Soviet government, well not always, but sometimes learned on its own mistakes. To avoid droughts in future, Stalin offered an ambitious project which was named Nature Transformation Plan. The goal was to plant eight huge forest belts on the edge of steppes. These forests were supposed to become natural shields against dry winds blowing from steppes. In addition to that, the Soviet government decided to create a network of artificial water reservoirs and plant steps with edible grass for the cattle as they made the soil more fertile. The plan was approved, and in a couple of years they started implementing it. 
almost the whole borderline with the step was covered with green. They planted so many trees that those forest lines can still be visible from space. Fish was bred in the artificial ponds. Stats went up. The yearly wheat harvest increased by a quarter. In some places, vegetables were harvested 75% more. Soviet citizens broke out of the famine threat and never faced it afterwards. Pundits think that had the plan been implemented in full, the harvest of vegetables and wheat would have been enough to feed half of the planet. But it wasn't supposed to be. The project stalled because of Stalin's death. And the next head of state, Khrushchev, quickly turned down the nature transformation plan. Sometime later, the USSR started having problems with food, which were not solved until the last days of the Soviet Union. The nature transformation plan could have become something big, the foundation for the future prosperity of the country or even the whole world. Thanks to this project, dry winds and dust storms were really defeated. But it all is now abandoned. The forest lines are not protected today. The fish ponds have either dried out or went wild. But if the nature transformation plan was implemented at least partially, the next Soviet mega-project died at its source. Luckily, because it could have brought disastrous consequences. Now we talk about turning rivers upside down. The idea of turning the Siberian rivers from north to south was born not in the Soviet Union. It was discussed back in the 19th century, but serious talks began only during the Soviet era. What's the essence of this project? All major rivers in Siberia flow into the Arctic Ocean. Basically, water goes nowhere and makes no use for people. Nature has been totally unfair towards the Soviet people and this mistake has to be corrected. That's what socialist ideologists said in the 1960s. The rivers had to be turned around so that dry areas of Siberia received more water. And the Soviet government seriously decided to implement this project. In 1968, different governmental offices received an order. It was necessary to develop a plan on transformation of the riverbeds. They decided to experiment on the Ob River, the waters of which had to be sent to the Oral and Caspian Seas. There were even more radical options. They wanted to include the rivers of the European part of the country into the plan too, more precisely, Pechora and northern Dwina rivers. The goal was to supply the south of the country with more water. Several times the government tried to solve this problem. In 1976, first works around the Ob River started. But they hadn't forgotten about Pechora. The wildest decision was picked for it. The project was named Taiga. They decided to redirect Pechora towards the Caspian Sea, but instead of digging a channel, they decided to use explosives. And not just explosives, but nuclear bombs. In 1972, the nuclear explosions were made in the Perm region. Each of them was 15 kilotons. That's about the power of the Hiroshima bomb. The warheads were set under the ground. Explosions caused earthquakes for 10 kilometers. That's absolutely unusual for the region. The land was thrown up into the air for 300 meters. And that was only the beginning. To finish the channel, it was necessary to conduct 247 more nuclear explosions. But something went wrong after the first experiment. The radioactive particles went outside of the Soviet Union and this was unacceptable as it was a violation of various international agreements on the nuclear weapons. The project was stalled and the crater was filled with water. That lake was called nuclear and it still exists. They tried to dig the channels in more traditional ways, but soon Gorbachev became the head of the state. Specialists explained to him the danger of the river's redirection. It turned out that natural flow of rivers to the north was not a mistake but a part of a huge system. If the project was called to life, the climate of the northern regions would have changed for the worse. There were different reasons for the closure of the project, the lack of finances and the fear of a new disaster among them. The decision to close the project was made a few weeks after the Chernobyl disaster. The Soviet country had enough of the experiments. The desire to play with nature had cost millions of lives and the health of millions of people. 
The Soviet system allowed the leaders of the government to realize their most crazy fantasies with ease, both good ones and bad ones. If the Nature Transformation Plan died with its author, Stalin, the redirection of the Siberian rivers became impossible because of the collapse of that system. But the question arises, can a Western country make such a project come true? Let's try to find the answer in the Netherlands. The North Sea to the west of La Manche has always drawn a lot of attention. In some sense, it is the center of European culture. Not a very deep sea between the Netherlands, Denmark and Britain is too interesting to forget about it. But this place has not always been underwater. Humanity witnessed a period when a large part of the North Sea was a land. Dogaland. This was the name of the land that connected the Netherlands and Great Britain into one continent. Last pieces of land went underwater 7,000 years ago. We can call the Dutch arguably the best fighters against water. They have been at war with the sea throughout their history. Since the 16th century, the Dutch have been capturing pieces of land from the sea. Such reclaimed pieces of land are called polders. To create them, the Dutch usually built a dam and dry the water. Around 20% of the Netherlands' territories consist of polders. The Dutch like to say, God created the Earth and the Dutch created the Netherlands. The largest project on the nature transformation was the project called Zodezeweken. The Netherlands was constantly struck by floods. For a long time, they were looking for a solution to protect their territories from the sea. The First World War initiated the start of the project. The Netherlands chose to be neutral in this war, but the fear of famine brought to the need of a new land. The North Sea waters are way less salty than Mediterranean. That's why it's possible to plant crops and gather harvest. But this time, the plan was really titanic. To dry out the necessary land, the Dutch were going to close a whole gulf. The distance between both shores was 30 kilometers, but the hard work of 10,000 workers and countless equipment was not in vain. In five years, in the beginning of the 30s, the dam was built. The Zoldersee Gulf was turned into a lake. As a result, 1,650 square kilometers were reclaimed from the sea. Today, there are cities in this area which was a sea 100 years ago. Some of them are inhabited by 200,000 people. Alongside another Dutch project called Delta, Zoldersee-Werken is included in the top 7 modern world wonders. This is a great example of a nation uniting against a natural disaster, and people did not need a charismatic leader to go out and fight the sea. You just need a clear goal and adequate tools to reach it. Why were some projects implemented and others were not supposed to come true? There is no absolute answer for this question. There were too many factors and variables that affected the outcome. Some projects seem ridiculous in the 21st century. We don't understand how such projects could have even been offered. The thing is that we have more knowledge about the surrounding world than people back then. But crazy ambitions and the desire to reach new heights have to be respected. And what's in common with those projects that were successful? The unity of will. It's hard to make even a small group of people do something together, let alone a whole nation. A man is a very selfish creature. But some countries succeeded in this. Just take a look at Dubai, which we missed today, as it's quite a new project and the experiment is not finished yet. A deserted land which was turned into a real paradise thanks to will, talent and oil money. That's exactly what the ancient Persians dreamt of. This is an example where humanity dominated nature. As we see, this doesn't necessarily bring victims and disasters. If you found these stories interesting, subscribe to our channel, like this video and leave comments if you know other examples of people trying to dominate nature. Thank you and see you soon.